Finally, the most important thing about this tool set, and the, the one thing I really want to stress is that at any time you can edit your character creations. So go up into Epic Games and edit existing character. We only have our sample character, so we can go ahead and edit the export file. That's our file that has the joint mover, the joints, our skin weights, anything like that. So now that we've got our export file up, we can go back to skeleton placement. We can tweak the placement of joints. So here you could go in, you could turn on symmetry, and then you could go in tweak, say I want to move my upper arm just a tiny little bit, whatever. You could do all that and commit your changes. You could actually go all the way back to skeleton creation and add and remove joints. Um, in fact, I'll go ahead and do that so you can kind of see. We've already saved out our physique template, so I'm not worried about that. And we could go in here and we could say, actually, you know what? I don't need these hip pouches. Let me go ahead and delete those. Or let me, you know, add some toes or whatever you want to do. You could do that here. When we go back, it's going to remember your joint mover settings. It's going to remember where those were. Now, if you're going to do things in between this step and going back to skeleton placement, it's recommended that you save out a template for your joint mover. That way you can just be sure because this is temporary data that just lives in the scene. So you can see it did that. Now if we go to our physique and load in our endomorph, we're back to where we were. We don't have our hip pouches. Now if this were an actual mesh that we had done skin weighting on, um, when we were in deformation setup and we go back to skeleton placement, it will actually temporarily save out your weighting information for all of your meshes that it finds which means that you can go back to skeleton placement, tweak joint placements, do whatever you need to do, go back into deformation setup, and your weights will still be there. They'll be completely unchanged. Uh, you can even change the scale of your model and the weights will still come in because they're based on vert number. So let's go back to deformation setup. I'm gonna recreate our rig pose. Hit save. And in this case, we'll ask it to go ahead and skin weight our proxy mesh. So basically, at any time, we can go back and forth. I want to show you one other thing. If we go back to skeleton placement and we change something, okay. Just want to make sure that I was actually recording. Um, say we change something quite drastic, like we'll go ahead and just move the arm. And we hit deformation setup, you'll notice that you will get a warning. It says that your character's model pose, which means you've, uh, say you just got an updated model, some things have been tweaked on it, so you've moved around the joints. That has been, that's different from what has been recorded and it will ask you if you'd like to update that model pose. It's highly recommended that you do so, so you go ahead and hit update. And then because you updated your model pose, it's likely that you're going to want to update your rig pose. Otherwise, the stored rig pose might undo those changes that you just did. So go ahead and hit update. We can then say auto world space. That way we get back into our T pose. And let's go ahead and hit save. And then it's going to go ahead and take us through the same prompts. Now, depending on the edits that you do, say you're just going to do skin weight edits, you don't have to rebuild the rig. You can simply just save your changes. However, make sure that you save your changes, uh, save your file with assume rig pose, because um, this is the pose that the rig's being built on. So you want to make sure that you, if you do a skin weighting change, that you go back to rig pose when you save your file. And uh, this export file is being referenced into the animation rig file, so your skin weighting changes will get updated real time to your animators. Now, if you're gonna do joint movement changes, joint placement changes, or you're gonna add things to your character, it's recommended, uh, in this case, that you go ahead and you rebuild. 
So let's go ahead and re-publish uh, our character. We'll click on sample character because we want to overwrite him. Uh, it will say that a character already exists. Yep, I want to overwrite. I'll use the existing thumbnail, that's fine. And then it will go ahead and build the character again. So just remember at any time you can go back, you can edit your characters, you can edit the skin weighting, and all this stuff will carry over to your animator's files. So I'll just let this go, and then we'll close up this video. All right, so that will be it for our uh, character creation video. You can look at the documentation, which goes into far more depth about what the tools do and, and all the kind of the under the hood stuff about it. But for just getting you up and started, hopefully these will help. Thank you so much. Bye.